Gotta get the right one. Gotta get the right one. In compliance with the open public meeting law, I wish to state that on February 25th, 2022, the notice of meeting of the Township Committee was posted on the official Township Bolton Board, the Upper Township website, mailed to the Cape and County Gazette, the Atlantic City Press, the Ocean City Sentinel Ledger, the Herald Times, and filed with the Township Clerk. Tonight's meeting is be being video recorded up to until the closed session portion of the meeting and will be available on the Upper Township website. I hereby direct that this announcement be made part of the minutes of this meeting. Would everyone please stand for the flag salute? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Here. 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 I'd like to make a motion that we approve the regular and closed session meeting minutes from February 14th. Big problems. Second. Please call the roll. Yes. 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 Abstain. Yes. yes. Before we do the report to government officials, I think we're going to do this resolution presentation. Uh, let these guys go home for get their homework done if they want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, with no further ado, we're going to do this presentation. And as we call your name, please come forward so we can uh, honor you. And we're going to line you off for a photo. Uh, whereas the Upper Township Riptide. Gray hockey team finished an impressive season in first place. And whereas the Upper Township Riptide Gray hockey team participated in the Cape May County Hockey League Championship in December 2021 and won the 2021 Cape May 5th through 8th grade division championship by winning a best of three series versus Middle Township two games to one. Whereas it is appreciated that on behalf of the citizens of Upper Township, we recognize and congratulate the players listed as follows. And please come forward. Zach D. Augustine. Committee 
on behalf of the citizens of Upper Township to extend the Upper Township Riptide Gray Hockey Team congratulations on becoming the 2021 Cape May Hockey League 5th through 8th grade division champions. And to each coach, our heartfelt and gratitude for the generous donation of your time, services to the young people who are of our community, giving under our hands the sealed Upper Township the 14th day of February, 2022. Congratulations. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor. Uh, just two items and uh, committee, uh, just two items this evening. Um, first item is uh, uh, our COVID report. Um, as you know, uh, COVID-19 report has been issued since uh, April of 2020, first on almost a daily basis. And then over the last probably six or eight months, it seemed to reduce to a weekly basis. Uh, as of this past Friday, uh, I learned from the Cape May County Health Department and the uh, county commissioners uh, who issued this report um, that they will no longer uh, be issuing COVID, regular COVID up updates, um, and that's simply because of the, fortunately, I'm happy to report, the numbers are just so low, uh, hospitalizations are so low, um, that they realize that the report is no longer necessary. Um, of course, they will be continuing to uh, collect the data and it is available through the Cape May County um, website. Um, and then we have a link to that also on our Upper Township website. So um, as things change, um, you know, uh, they will be reporting it and we will pick that up and, and I will report it as necessary. Um, there is obviously a recommendation to continue um, to uh, practice the proper CDC guidelines relative to COVID-19, get yourself vaccinated um, and, uh, uh, and Basically, that is it from the uh, county uh, COVID-19. Um, the next item I have for you this evening is I'm looking for uh, approval from committee. Um, uh, this marks the sixth annual uh, Upper Township Business Association Membership and Community Guide. As most of you know, I'm familiar with this book that comes out on an annual basis. Um, uh, that basically not only has information about the 10 villages that make up Upper Township, but it has a lot of other information relative to our individual departments um, who contribute to this each and every year. Uh, we partnership with Upper Township Business Association and the Sentinel Ledger who uh, provides it to us and publishes it for us. Um, and uh, I'm looking for uh, approval uh, to once again uh, be involved with this project. Uh, it's something that our clerk's office, uh, Upper Township Emergency Management, Public Works, EMS, uh, and even some of the outside agencies of the fire districts um, all contribute to. And it's, it's a good, it's a lot of great information um, to provide to our residents here in the township. Uh, and each one of you, by the way, has a copy of the, of the breakdown. Um, normally what we do on an annual basis is uh, provide for a full page ad um, that uh, basically outlines um, the township committee um, and then it goes on from there to the individual departments and, um, and if you ever have looked at this you'll see that it's all broken down in that manner. It's something we've done in the past. I think it's uh, a good community outreach program. I think it's something we should do. Obviously we budgeted. And if there's anything specific that committee um, would like to add to this, I do go around uh, over the, probably the next month, 
We'll be talking to each one of the departments and we'll be uh, updating the information that's in here, providing new information. Um, so if committee has anything that they would like me to add to this, we can certainly do that. Do you need to do that in the form of a motion? Or? I'd like okay. to make that motion. I also uh, I'd like to add in there. I know um, the fire department. I think is having their 75th or more. Or more fire departments having their 75th uh, anniversary, and I, I think it would be maybe That's put June the same 5th, thing. I believe, right? June 11th. June 11th. Will this be published before that? Um, no. As a matter of fact, yeah. it will, will not be. We should, we should then, 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 I'm then getting instead of advertising, we should congratulate them on their 75th. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. It does say published March 18th, so it, I would double check. It says on here. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I don't know I if that's old or. It, it, <laughs> yes, it, it usually gets extended. But maybe, more, so. maybe check. I got yes. it. Yes. But I, you know, yeah. we had, we had discussed maybe putting in uh, the dates for some of the special events would be a good plan. And we will do that. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll second the motion. Sorry. <laughs> uh, yes. 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 That's all I have. Barbara, do you have anything for us? Nothing. Mr. Young. I'm pleased to announce that the Business Point property is closed. Uh, you will be able to pay or do calls from Zoom's calls from the buyers, Business Point Development Group, and the seller's attorney. Uh, the buyers have specifically said today they intend to immediately start demolishing. Uh, they will continue the remediation. Do they have to? Uh, they have to get permits to tear down, right? Yes, they've only started that process. My they, they, they sent us some sample uh, information already, kind of made it prepared for it. So I anticipate that that'll be forthcoming. And I did request, obviously, because this is a significant movement in demolition that we ought to take the headlines so we can explain to the neighbors what's going on. The fire district. Yes. Know. Is there any way that you can put the new buyers, who I have no idea who they are, in touch with me and Curtis or get we us in touch? We sent you today a biography of the of organization that purchased. Mm -hmm. We have an outline of uh, the uh, credentials and background of each of the principals of the Business Point Development Group. Well, we just sent okay. Yeah. okay, well, that's fine. And then we'll be able to get in touch with so them and they'll yeah. answer yeah. the phone. Yeah, I had it. At, I got it around 4:30. Uh, I haven't checked it since I'm sure there'll be a lot of people that may want to know who they are, and okay. what's going on, what their experience is. Apparently, you have a lot of experience with demolition, and remediation, and redevelopment. Yeah, and as we move through uh, demolition, uh, I'm sure we'll set up some because there's some large demolition activities going on. We'll make sure to coordinate you know, safety meetings with the uh, uh, you know, fire company and the uh, EFS to make sure everybody's oh. up to date on the work. There's an ulterior motive to, to this as well. Uh, not only that, but I'm also concerned we have potentially, uh, it's a great training site if they're dependent on how they're moving forward. Not necessarily for the Moore Fire Department, but we have a USAR team within the county that they don't get sites like this. If there's a possibility of that happening, I'd like to find that out and, and offer that up to them. Um, you know, obviously it would be up to the owners and. I'm sure it will be insurance and, and the like. So uh, we have to, you know, obviously get ready for that particular thing. That's yeah. way out of our scope. So it would be. We will need to meet uh, in the near future with the group owners and right. the development council, redevelopment council. Right. Um, we anticipate there'll be at least a preliminary designation at our next meeting uh, uh, with the new owners. Well, I understand there'll be at least two years demo, probably. They had they had up to almost three, three and a half years of demolition. Yeah, so it's uh, it's uh, that's quite good news, though, Dan. That's uh, that is good news. Yes, yes. Paul. Um, just wanted to let the committee know that the uh, Scarborough completed the dredging operations last week.
just one thing. Uh, we have set the date for our Easter egg hunt. It will be Saturday, April 9th, with a rain date of Sunday, April 10th. The event will be from 10 to 1. Um, it will be divided up into three age groups. I apologize for looking at my phone, but that's how I have it, <laughs> where I have it written out here. So it, ages 0 to 3 will be from 10 a.m. to 10.30. Ages 4 to 8, 10.30 to 11. And ages 8 to 12, from 11 to 11.30. The Easter Bunny will be present from 10 to 1 for anyone who wants to take their picture with him. And there will also be face painting from 10 to 1. That's all I have this evening. Thank you. Mark, do you have any Nothing this evening, sir. Jay, you have any of course I do. Stop. Stop. <laughs> um, first of all, we had our uh, rabies clinic on uh, February 26th. This was rescheduled due to a snowstorm uh, that occurred on the prior date, which I think was January. What was that? But it doesn't make a difference what, what, what it was. And there was 149 vaccines administered and 66 licenses were licenses were issued and that uh, works out well for us because you have to have your animal licensed by the end of March, right? February. February? Oh, I thought it was March. Good, but mine are done, so I'm not done. <laughs> so I would done, mine were done probably. So it was a hell in success. Yeah, yes, a hell in success. So, yeah, wah, wah, wah. so as, uh, as you know, we had, um, the, Mr. Young just announced the, uh, the sale has closed at BL Lingon. And at our reorganization meeting, uh, myself and Mayor Corson were tasked with working with the, with the new, new developers in there, and myself and committee woman Hayes were tasked with working with Orsted. And, uh, you know, in talking with, with uh, Kim, we're, we're looking forward to meeting with Orsted and regarding their future plans at the former BLM on site. We'll make our best effort to make sure that, the, that our partnership with Orsted brings the best possible outcome for the residents of Upper Township. And I think Kim and I working together with that will um, uh, have something yeah. to say. I, I, well. Yeah, we, we already have some ideas of ways that they can benefit the township. And I'd like to say that, you know, just the preliminary conversations that we've had with them, they have been um, very gracious, very easy to work with. They've listened to our concerns and are willing to do what they can to mitigate any of, the, any of the concerns that our residents have. So we're happy to move forward and looking forward to what we can do for the township with their cooperation. That's all I have, Mr. <laughs> Mayor. Okay, thank you. Um, just along those lines, it is a very good day for Upper Township to have this, you know, be moving off the center line and we'll be moving forward. And, you know, I look forward to working with all my colleagues to make this the best project we can have in Upper Township. Well, that being said, uh, Paul Dietrich and I met Saturday with members of uh, Strathmere Fish and Environmental Club, and we met down at the Strathmere Boat Ramp, and uh, there's some talked about the Living Shoreline project that we had going there, and uh, I'd like to move that off center line, and uh, it's something that has to be addressed or should be addressed and we have numerous places in the upper township that could be affected by the living shoreline and future grant money and one of them would include the PL England site. The, the other one is between the two bridges in most of the city's traffic areas, highly eroded. But right now we're in danger of our boat ramp having some serious issues. And uh, there is a uh, some grant money out there, there's some applications that can be made, but we're going to do a little bit of a study. And we actually, the money was budgeted last year for it and not utilized. The money is still in the budget this year. And what I would like to do is to fish an environmental club that's heading this up uh, project with uh, uh, Mike or uh, Doug Gaffney. Yeah, Gaffney was. Uh, <coughs> Members of the Fish and Environmental Club, it was uh, Scott Oliver, Herb Ollinger, and uh, Wayne Thomas. That's what it was. And uh, I think it's a, something that we all need to look at. And I, we are going to have the tide if we're right, if we want to do this on 10 o'clock 
Saturday the 26th. If everybody would like to meet down there and hear the presentation from the Fish and Environmental Forum. But we would have to advertise that as a meeting anyway, right, Dan? Everybody's in agreement. I'd like to advertise it as a meeting. We could all go there, and then we could all. I think they're going to have the spot in the firehouse, or we uh, to actually go over some presentation or it's nice to have you do it all out there. Yeah, I, I think that's or good to. Would we just discuss the, with the environmental club okay. the living shore line? The living shore line. Plus, we need to know. It, that would be one focus, one focus only, right. no other discussion. Yeah, Yes, right. and that'll get us, but it's actually, I think, it should be advertised, because I honestly believe it's going to, it affects the whole township from our Tuck Island River corridor, all the way around the BL England property, to the, the Ross Tratton Fair, Fairway there, or thoroughfare. March 26th. March 26th, we have a low tide in the morning, and it's a perfect, Time to look at it, and I was, what was the time? 10 a.m. Now, is that, do we need action? Would that make it mandatory for Barbara to be there? If you're gonna have a meeting, you're gonna have to have some kind of recording information. That's what this is. Yes. Yeah. Are you okay with that? <coughs> Be video recorded or can it just be an audio recording? Okay. <laughs> Do we have some kind of recorder? Okay. <laughs> um, obviously, if you can't make it, Barbara, maybe Joanne can or we in your office. Yeah. Okay. Sorry to spring it on everybody. I think it's it's a month away. Yeah, but it's kind of it's it was actually very informative meeting with them. Um, I think uh, they were surprised at some of the resources we had with the aerial photography and also it's, it's, it, they only had it for a couple of years and it was uh, very interesting. So. And I think that's all I have. So. That's enough, I guess. <laughs> and obviously we're going to ask Paul to be here. I don't know. If be. There's really no need for you to be here, Scott, unless you want to be. <laughs> um, if you are going to set that meeting, I'll just motion a second to add that to the calendar and authorize the motion for it. I'll, I'll make a motion that we hold the meeting on March 26th at 10 a.m. Second. Please call the roll. Mr. Providence? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. to make a motion that we approve the consent agenda as print. Second. Second. Please call roll. Yes. 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 Hearing no public comment on ordinance number one of 2022, we'll close it and open it up for discussion if anyone here has any questions. 
Moving right along with that, Kelly. I'll make a motion that we adopt ordinance number one of 2022. Second. Please call the roll. Mr. Collins? Yes. Mr. Page? Yes. Mr. Newman? Yes. Mr. Cantor? Yes. Mayor yes. Clayton? Yes. yes. I'll make uh, it. I'll put it in the form of a motion. Yeah, just uh, I wanted to ask Dan a question first. Okay. <laughs> sure. I'm sorry. Um, th does this ordinance take the take the increase out of old ordinance and allows us to? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I just want to move it. Second reading is that it gets adopted. We'll have a resolution to do it. That, okay. Um, basically, saying the piece. Thank you very much. Which from then on we'll be able to do it by resolution right. instead of. Makes it a little bit less expensive today. Thank you, Dan, for facilitating that because that was it. Uh, yeah, yes, I'll, I'll second that. Yes. 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 Second. Yes. 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 I'll make a motion that we approve it. Second. Yes. 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 Motion authorized. Second. Yes. 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 Motion authorized. Second. Yes. 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 
Motion authorized. Second. Please call roll. Mr. Rogers? Yes. Ms. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Looks like the crew company got their yeah, raising some money. Raising some money. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, they need to. <laughs> That's a pricey sport. Yeah. <laughs> Nowhere to do it in Ocean City, though. Huh? Yeah. Nowhere to do it in Ocean City, huh? Yeah. They don't allow they don't allow games of chance. No, no. drove by it and it's, I think it helps actually stabilize the areas because if most of our beach entrance ways have the same erosion problem so Yes. Yes. Yes.
Yeah. I'll make a motion. Move forward with. I'll second it. Roll. Yes. 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 I'd like to comment on the first part, portion of it. I would definitely like to keep the parking lot permit in effect for Cove Road for, for a couple couple of reasons. Because we have the same problem on Harbor Road. Cove Road is unimproved. Well, well I, actually, I would just say we should just make that no parking. We should probably just That's make fine. Because really, there are yeah. no residences on Cove Road that would park, park out there. Cove Road. Right. So, so my recommendation actually would be we should just move that into the no parking schedule. They hunt back there. Right? They, right. Never so they hunt, hunt back there at all? Okay. Yeah, yeah, but there's never anybody parking there. Right? No, no. Cove Road is Cove Road is the road that's that parallels the parkway. So I think we should probably leave it by permit only. And why I say that is, if there's a bridge project on or something like that, they might actually have to park construction vehicles in there. Well, I think we can adopt it then. I, yeah, I think didn't yeah. we make that no parking on most of? Cove Road after the last improvement with the park project. I thought we we had cordoned off that no, whole one. So Harbor. on Harbor Road, I'm sorry, I thought Harbor. Road. Yeah, right. So, but we're talking about permitting on Harbor Road. We've removed a portion of that parking Cove down Road. by the bridge. No, on Harbor Road was on the all on the west side of uh, the parkway. Is no parking on this section of Cove Road. It's really not impacted. And the sign is still there. Park back around. Yeah. So I, I I would have no problem with. You know, parking. Uh, what the mayor is saying is that, it, that we might have another bridge project. That would be great, but we can change it then. If we yeah, that's because I, I would just have enough parking. Yeah. So, is there a consensus that we, we eliminate the harbor but keep and make no, no parking? I, I, would, leave, I would keep no parking it. on harbor as well, from at least from uh, no, yeah, from west of the Parkway Bridge. Out to Route Nine, we've had a continuing problem. That already is. Yeah, that's it's what I'm already saying. That's already, it's already there. there right? Yeah. Only east of the parkway is fine. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't have a problem with that because I think the the residents would like to have a party and be able well, to park on there. Yeah. Who's who's, yeah. Enforce, who's enforcing it? That's my question. No, like, right? Who's going and checking for the like? If, so, we, I, putting a rule in place that we're not enforcing really just well, that doesn't really well, make a lot of sense to me. Yeah. Right. Well, if we had an issue, issue we parking or parking enforcement people would handle. That's who's going to police the one in traffic. Right. Or, and or if you had the parking by permit or no parking, then you. 
call the state police and say they don't have a permit. I think, right, but I think no parking is easy with an yeah. easy fix to call the state police as there's no parking here. Mm -hmm. When we get into permits, how, I mean, we would have to talk to the state police, how willing are they going to be yeah. to check permits they're to not, see if they should be, not. right, right, that's what I'm saying. So I think what you said, we, we make it no parking on Cove and we've already eliminated, you know, half of it on Harbor, so. Yes. And you know, we need, we don't need the permits on the other side. Getting back to blowing the bulkheads, Strathair, I think it's got to be permit damage. Well, it could be a permit, but it can be parked by only authorized township vehicles, either by a, 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 a township permit or in these hours. Yeah. And that, that's not making this simple, it, it's, but that's up to you as just how you do it. I mean, I, I don't think it's anything like what we have now parking by permit. It's really not. We would, re we would rewrite our per per parking by permit to, 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 yes. to address it how Dan verbalized it, yeah. yes. as opposed to how it's. Well, I, have, I have a session that would say, and we would say this session of road, like, you understand when our ordinance works, it says parking, no parking, or parking, or no parking at a certain time, and then you go to a schedule and it gives the road, and then it says what the restrictions are. Okay, it might say east side of the road or whatever. What I would do with the ordinance is essentially say the, the parking spaces that Paul's going to identify for me and on the committee, that those parking spaces between the hours of the 9 and noon. 9 and noon. Yes. Yes. We, for the time, we're going to open up the public comment. Is there anyone in the public that would like to address the Council Committee?
is a new administrative position budget form. Right. Um, it's not filled. It but was. It's hanging there, correct? The money's there. It's not there yet because our budget's not approved. We have actually looked at all aspects of the budget, both together as a group we've looked at it and individually. Uh, but that can't close the question that when there was no conversation whatsoever. And I'm not, I'm just asking you, not I, I don't expect to get an answer right now, but I know that you're going back again, I think. Um, there's a, well, honestly, there's people that sit up here that probably think we need a little bit more leadership. The creation of that position gives us the flexibility. We haven't filled, as Mayor Corson said, we haven't filled the position. Um, we haven't interviewed for the position. We have, so it gives us the flexibility to create a more efficient government. We've heard from so many of your friends in the audience about you know how they felt that there was a lack of communication in the township, and they felt there were so many things that we needed, and we're trying to respond to those by creating positions of authority with people who are able to meet the needs of the community. That's, that's what we're attempting to do there. And I, I, so I appreciate your concern, and I, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. We're looking at you know, how do we utilize our workforce in the best possible, most efficient way for the taxpayers' dollars. I, I, well, I'm not even talking specifically about that new administrative position. I don't, I've been in corporate management before, and you know, I'm not here to look at your tree. You know, I'm just speaking around the fact that everybody's doing. But when you're looking at a budget, there's a definite need Well, I'm curious as to why the public forum, and I would ask this question at the workshop because it's been open to the public at that point, um, just out of curiosity. I mean, I've been an owner of business on you know, a lot of different levels, and it's just, it's a, this is when you brainstorm and sort of figure it all out. I, and that's nice in the private sector where you can, you know, combine positions and eliminate positions. Unfortunately, we're beholden to Title 40 that a lot of our positions are you know, they don't need, they, we're not allowed to replace, we're not allowed to change, we have to have certain constitutional positions in place. Okay. So those aren't allowed to be eliminated. And right now, we... I will, I will make a comment, though. The administrator is not a required position for our form of government, so I just nope. want to get that clear. It is not. Okay. So. Right, right now, we have 30 employees that work for public works. Within the last year or two of them, seeks employment or left employment with us. They are getting replaced immediately. Or they're, the money's budgeted, blah, 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 but they're going to be replaced. But what we were going to do was to move the employment from 32 to 35, which I don't know how many years ago we had 35 employees, and that's what we cut, the three proposed. We proposed two part-timers to go in there through our busy season, through November, and it's quite possible. The problem is if we, the part-timers, the problem is we were so far over budget. And every time we had a full-time employee, we had the full-time salary, the benefits, and all that, and it cost us close to $90,000 for an employee. And it's the longevity of it. That doesn't go away. So next year, if we hire the full-time employees now, next year we're already starting over. And what happens, is we can only raise our budget 2% a year, which, believe it or not, is only $86,000. There's absolutely no way anybody could live in their house if they were only limited to a 2% increase this year. Yeah. That's not even a cost Especially of living. this year. You know, I mean, it's...
That's why it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> I hope not. Well, our public <laughs> line is, they're the goose, they're the people that yeah. are really keeping our townships the way it should be and safe and wonderful and everything we love about it. So without knowing everything else, to me, it was an obvious kind of look at why you did not even, if you floated the idea and it wasn't, it just got totally ignored. And I'm just curious as to why that wasn't broached. And I'm not sure you can give me the answer right now. I just sort of wanted to put it out there that if you do go back, If we do come back and we have to discuss budget again, it will be considered. Okay, I appreciate it. And it, it wasn't the first time. We've had this discussion numerous meetings when we did the salary ordinance, when we did the title ordinance, and created this position. We've had this conversation many times in the recent months. Okay, I appreciate the opportunity to come to the workshop. First time <laughs> This is a, a new road for Upper Township in its redevelopment process. You heard it tonight that the demolition itself is going to be three years. There's going to be a lot of planning, a lot of public opportunity, a lot of time to look at this, and a, little, a whole bunch of time to get this right. That would be great. That would be great. That's one of the reasons I'm on both of them, because I live in Beasley's Point. So, <laughs> and I grew up in Beasley's Point. So it's, it's, uh, well, it's great, and it, and it is great to live there. And you're looking forward to it. Certainly, it'll be wonderful when it's all finished. And yes. uh, a great opportunity for revenue for the township that we desperately need to avoid what's happening with the budget. Um, one other thing is, I do think that the, I don't know who's in charge of the website at this point, but I know some of you are savvy, savvy Mr. Pinnacos, at doing the website thing. The website needs desperate updating. <laughs> Already on it. <laughs> Already on it. <laughs> Yep, already on it. We're in it. Already in the already in the already process. In the works. <laughs> Not ready to announce it yet, but already yeah. in the works. <laughs> yeah. I, I think you'll be very proud of the new. Uh, I know. I've been waiting. 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 I've been waiting
was my pick. <laughs> It's rusted through the it's back, it the back end. It, it actually imploded. The, the, the vacuum part. It actually imploded yeah. on itself. <laughs> it's <laughs> not. Right. It's, uh, it's actually. We don't have any right here. It's done. It's done. So can we get any money for it? Or we, yes. Yeah, right. <laughs> yes, we can. <laughs> Probably in the private sector, um, we have to we have to dispose of things, and we use to do form uh, govdeals.com. It will be listed on there, and hopefully, it's a nationwide website or worldwide. Right, this is all worldwide, right? right? Um, and anybody has an opportunity to bid on it, and if you, if you think it's worth eighty thousand dollars, and this stuff gets money, <laughs> feel free to bid. <laughs> and then it's not your fault. Asbestos was abated. That problem. So the, the, the last we had estimates on refurbishing that building was eight hundred thousand. I thought it was. It was a million. Yeah, it was a million. Yeah. Yeah, was Which, a million. So here's my here's my thing. Is I'm thinking because we need money. There's properties that are being sold. Which I'm grateful. There's let's say there's fifteen hundred properties in the township. But we're really still in the dire times. And I know as a business owner, I don't know what to charge anymore because every day there's new pricing. Is it possible that that can be sold and let the remediation of that become the person or persons that buy that? Let it be their problem that, that when they buy it, it has to be under our terms and we have to remediate it. And that's the asbestos has been remediated. No, I'm not talking about the actual building. We have it doesn't seem like it's going to be used anytime soon. If it is a historical factor, we need to hold on to it. I'm the first one. I live in one of the old Corset houses. But I do believe that it's never going to be used, that it's a certain, a viable piece of property that could bring revenue and that you might be able to then, perhaps as uh, you know, Barbara said, that you might be able to bring back some employees or things like that to help pay for things that we need now because it's unforeseen times. You know? So maybe that's something that will That was talked about in the past. There, at, at the past, it was rented to one of the train Model train organization. It was not a significant amount of rent. It was something for the community to do. We used to have Santa Claus there and all that. Um, at one time, we talked about you know, our, uh, selling the building off. The problem is the parking spots there are also for our ball field, our team ball field. So we would have to do a condo thing to the property. So if we sold the property, then we lose the parking for the ball field. So it goes, it's not as simple as selling the building. Yeah. If it was, we would have probably- yeah, Well, I don't know. know. <laughs> what it would have bought. I don't, I don't think it's ADA compliant either. No, it's, it's not. not a big problem. Oh, I don't think it could ever be. Yeah. 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 Oh, it could be ADA compliant. Yeah. For a million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I understand we're renovating the whole virus. So we're 
There's no beer cans in those walls, right? There's no beer cans in those walls. I think there's a lot. No more public comment. We'll close the public portion of the meeting. Um, we can entertain a motion to go into closed session. I hereby move that a resolution be incorporated into the minutes authorizing the Township Committee to enter into executive session for the following matters pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act. The matters are personnel, litigation, heavy versus upper township, potential litigation, zoning permit denials, contract negotiation for the following. Bond Council, Special Legal Council for Tax Court Matters, Actuarial Services, Green Acres Land Sale, and the MUA Study. I also include in my motion the estimated time and circumstances under which the discussion conducted in closed session can be disclosed to the public as follows. It is anticipated that the matters discussed in closed session may be disclosed to the public upon the determination of the Township Committee that the public interest will no longer be served by such confidentiality. With respect to employment personnel matters, such discussions will be made public and when formal action is taken or when the individuals involved consent that it can be made public. With respect to contract negotiations, such matters will be made public when negotiations have ceased and there is no longer a reason for confidentiality. With respect to litigation matters, such discussions will be made public when litigation is complete and the applicable appeal period has expired. Second. Please call the roll. Yes. 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 No. Thank you, John. Does everybody want to take a stand or everybody good? Yeah, good. I'm good. 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 Good